Homemaking can be defined as care for the needs of the human person. The verb is care, the noun is needs, and the object is the human person. Okay, so understanding that from the outset really helps to clarify what we're, what we're working with. There are elements of artistry and craftsmanship in homemaking, but homemaking is not essentially production. It's not making and doing, it's care for the basic needs of the human person. And there are elements of management to homemaking, systematizing, organizing, but there again, it's not essentially a work of directive action or direction, management. It's responsive. It's responsive to the needs of the human person. Service to the basic needs of the human person is the first work of mankind. We, before you civilize, before you get together to do anything, you need first to be alive. And therefore, you need to make sure that the basics are taken care of. Food, clothing, shelter, and health. These are the basic needs of the human person. The work involved in taking care of these basic needs predates all other work and predates civilization. Once those things are in place, people get together and they figure out how to do that in a more uh, efficient and organized manner. So basically you get the, for, in order to have our daily bread, we need the farmer and the miller and the baker. And professions develop out of these basic needs of the human person. But there's always that subset of aspect of the basic needs of the human person that remains in the home. The, Farmer is there, the miller is there, the baker is there, but mothers and fathers still feed their families at home. And that's because there's something about the basic needs of the human person that's intimate and private that needs to be dealt with in a person-to-person -person exchange. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with delegating the greater part of the labor involved in meeting people's basic needs to professionals outside of the home. But there's always that aspect of feeding, clothing, sheltering, and healthcare that remains so deeply connected to identity, development, uh, personal security, that to remove it from the context of a stable human community, where it's not to delegate it out to the market or to delegate it to the state, where it's no longer a person-to-person -person exchange, is not good for society. So historically, uh, the responsive nature of homemaking was conflated with passivity. The um, Greek philosophers set up a false dichotomy. Men are active, women are passive. Women are passive because they receive the person into their very self and remained tied to the physical and material needs of the human person. However, Aristotle himself, the great Greek philosopher, taught us that by observing the physical and the material, we learn to contemplate and to make judgments and to use our reason. Actually, the greatest form of contemplation and use of reason is what happens in homemaking. The person who's taking care of the human person becomes aware of that person, contemplates them, becomes aware of their needs and responds to those needs. Homemaking is the first response to the human person and it's actually the prototype and standard for all work. Not only is it not passive or irrational, but it's the primary example of what rational human activity really should be. One of the reasons why the work of the home is devalued is because it's common. Everybody does it. Everybody has done it since the beginning of time. And our society does not value that which is common. It values that which is rare or unique, um, amazing, we need to replace the paradigm of novelty and individual achievement with a paradigm that insists upon the, primary, the primacy of service to the person. We find ourselves only when we give ourselves. We don't find ourselves when we are unique or famous. In fact, the only thing that's really worth working for is the good of the human person. Money isn't worth it, fame isn't worth it. Even self-fulfillment or self-expression are just not good enough. Our happiness is really contingent on our gift, and the place where we learn that is in the home, where we're taken care of 
and where other people take care of us and where we learn to take care of others. Understanding the unity of the human person, body and soul, is really vital for understanding the work of the home. The way in which the basic needs of the human person are met becomes like the platform for human growth and flourishing. Because the care for the basic needs communicates the idea, I want you alive. Your being is important to me. I will do what it takes to keep you healthy and with me. Um, I love you because you are. From there, the care of the basic needs becomes the context in which the foundations of personhood develop identity, self-knowledge, relationality, the use of reason. I often meet a lot of young people who are not having trouble doing, they're having trouble being. They'll tell me, I can't think, I can't stop crying, I don't know who I am, I can't control my reactions. And these are not merely lacks of virtue, these are lacks of the foundation on which virtue is built. This foundation comes from love, order, stability, and commitment in the human community into which the person is born. And these are the intangible building blocks that are deeply linked to the lived experience of having one's basic needs met by another.